Hi everybody, I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video for this series. We're going to be covering videos 14 and 15. What does that entail? The first thing in this video is going to be the player's death animation. So essentially, whenever the player falls off a ledge or a ladder and he's falling at a greater height um, from that distance, um, he's going to end up dying, of course. Basically, I'm just using a counter to figure out how far he has to fall. And then from there, once he has died several times, like in any game, there's going to be a game over screen, which is simply just a little display message at this point. And then also we're going to be covering the level changes. So whenever the player um, actually finds the correct door, in this case, I'm just going to make it a door that he enters eventually, that's when it's going to allow him to advance to a new level. And I may change it up as I continue to add more content to it. I also have somebody working on the map at the same time for us on that. Now, I also put on the original description that it would increase difficulty. But at this time, I'm not going to go into all that. Um, just having that really time to code in and that kind of stuff. And somewhere in the video here, I'm also going to be talking about GitHub and showing you how you can take a copy from GitHub and download it to your computer. That way, for those who are not familiar with, you know, how to get software on your computer and be able to run the files, you'll be able to see how to download it. Uh, maybe even show you an example where you can get CBM PRG Studio, open it up and demonstrate from there how to get to the GitHub that you downloaded and extract it to your computer and then run the files. So hopefully that'll help people get started. And if we have time somewhere here, I'll put in C64 Debugger and maybe go over some tips with it and everything. So yeah, this is going to be an interesting video. Uh, thanks for being away. Thanks for being um, patient with me after all this time. I've been um, a lot of things going on, moved into a new place, of course, and I even have a new computer at this point so um, as always I appreciate your subscriptions um, and please like on this page and hit those bell for notifications that way anytime I get a video out you will get a warning on it so let's get this started for this video series which includes projects 14 and 15 we will be learning how to check when a player sprite has landed on the ground after falling for a great distance this will result in a death and the sprite shape data will change. Then the player position is reset to try again. After so many deaths, the game over screen is displayed in the status window. We will also be covering and demonstrating how the player sprite can walk through a door and end up on a new map. This is accomplished by loading in a new map when an object collision, the attribute data, occurs when touching the door tile. Now, in this project, there are a lot of bugs that exist, of course, but I haven't slowed down the game progress since you can actually still play the game without any crashes currently. In time, I'll get to working on perfecting the scrolling. Um, I noticed the problem is occurring only when the sprite falls at the far right or the left edge of the screen. Um, the original engine I'm working with is kind of strange and it's really tasked me greatly. I'm grateful for it, but it's still burdensome to work with at times. During the game, the player will currently die whenever the sprite falls too high off a ledge. Later, we will add bullets affecting a death, but let's keep this simple for now since adding new code only weighs down more heavily on sorting out the logic. This can be especially challenging for new people learning how to create their very first Common 64 semi-language games. Therefore, when the player sprite subroutine is executed, a variable for player damage is tracked to see what type of damage was done, which is like falling from the ledge, player was shot, etc. When the players run out of lives, there's a variable that's called player underscore is dead, and it's checked for the lives left, and then the game over screen is triggered. Inside of player underscore routines dot ASM, apply gravity. The code below is reviewed after the player sprite has fallen off a cliff. The player sprite is moving down. That's the move player down, which you can see right here. And so if the um, variable that is increasing for a player underscore damage is less than 68, then our player sprite has not fallen a great distance. So he has recovered. So if we look at this, this is saying, is this uh, what's in player damage variable that's in the accumulator? Is it the value of 68 and this right down here is another opcode that's saying is it less than 68 so in other words it would be you know 67 66 65 and so on as he's falling down the screen it's incrementing and it's increasing the player damage as he falls 
and if it's less than that then he's not dead otherwise this is going to be the variable that's going to be set which is player you know is dead so initially um what that means is a player fell too great a height and due to increasing velocity has died now, as soon as our player sprite that has fallen a great distance reaches a floor again, the subroutine player state dead here, actually here's the subroutine player state dead is executed in the code below. The damage counter player damage is also reset back to zero so he can try again and keep the game going for now. So you can see right here, it's resetting everything back to zero and it's setting the, even the jump position. This is just originally, um, I had it whenever he was jumping and it's a variable that keeps track of how high he's jumping, so basically it resets all that too. The player sprite has died, so now we set a new variable called player underscore died to indicate this, which you see right here. The variable is checked right here to see if it has gone down to e zero, which is what the branch equal is zero, reading the zero flag once it reaches zero. And if so, the player state dead subroutine, which we see right here so is executed. And I already clicked on it so you see where it went. Otherwise, we continue the code for player state idle, which checks movement when the joystick is not being moved. The subroutine player state dead that checks for a player's death will also reset the variable player underscore damage back to zero as I mentioned earlier in the code below. A variable for player lives is checked and set in the player dead subroutine to check to see if the player has died too many times, which you see right here, player underscore lives. And this is checking to see if it's equal, if it's above zero, I'm sorry, above one still. And if it's not, then it's going to continue the game right here. Otherwise, it means basically the, the player has died too many times. So if he dies too many times, we're going to get the game over screen to be displayed here. However, once the player has died and the subroutine show dead sprite is called, which, is, which displayed the sprite dead player. Here's where the player restart map is uh, triggered. And down here is where it's checking the player is dead or whatever and the game score is going to be displayed you know once um once the game is over you're going to see this score and all that you left over what the, the results are how many how much score you had received in, during that game trial or whatever and initially if he's not then you know it would just continue the game down here which is a joystick and all that it restarts the life again basically a new life which i probably didn't talk about in this example but we start a new life to continue the, the process over and over again until the game is over of course now we're on to the game over display unfortunately our sprite has died too many times so the subroutine player game over was called which shows the message for game over then the game score is reset to zero and a variable called game score underscore active is set, which is used to determine when to tally the final totals, the final totals for the end of a game. So as you can see here, um, one thing that I mentioned, basically you want to go ahead and clear out the sprite positioning so that your sprite isn't going to show on the screen once he's over and cleared after we've gone through the subroutine part. And then you're going to hear I'm resetting the joystick. Now here I'm waiting for the fire button to restart the game and it's basically just just um, checking this bit which doesn't set anything but it just basically looks at the joystick value the individual binary bits inside there and checks to see if they're active and if they're not then it's going to go back to the wait joy for move and wait for you to press that button but as soon as they get set then of course it jumps down to the next line which is our reset game we basically we're starting a new game, so we're going to get the player five lives here. And then we're just basically setting up the game score map once more. Um, that's what this is all doing down here. And this is basically initializing the screen pointers for the screen one and the screen two of our map. If you go back to the original videos I had, I think it was like videos two and three or whatever, where I talk about the back and the front buffer. That's what that's doing right there. And then, of course, here now I'm taking advantage of resetting that map on the screen. So we're going to redraw it, basically. 
Now, another thing I, I wanted to do to make this a little bit more interesting is uh, review something which are essentially player deaths that can occur in different ty types of games that are already out there. And Commodore 64 games, deaths keep the game all that more interesting, of course. <laughs> Sometimes you may see an angel fly off, believe it or not, or just a player dropping to the ground, which is my case. Either way, it can be inter interesting reviewing other games with their, de their actual death sequences. And here's a short compilation I put together um, to kind of demonstrate that. We have Mission Impossible, which I think to this day is probably the most hilarious death you could ever see in a game because he actually screams as he falls down a pit. For the bottom of the screen, the death is activated followed by humorous audio. And you can see I've got the, the video here or, or just the image showing where the player is getting ready to fall halfway down and ready to, he's already, the audio is already kind of kicked in because he's already fallen and he's dying. Now, there's a game called out there called Arachnophobia, and there's a player in here called Delbert based on the original movie. When he dies after receiving multiple wounds for a spider, he basically just drops to the ground. Kind of creepy though. We also have Double Dragon. The player will die after many blows from an opponent and being knocked down several times, which is quite hilarious in that game too, because you see him pull, pull, get pummeled to the ground and he makes a funny noise as he hits the ground. And there's uh, many other games out there. Um, if I have some time, I'll probably show some more quick um, snippets of those. It is quite common for games to have more than one level. Therefore, currently, whenever the player completes a map, he will advance to the new level. This is demonstrated here when the player sprite reaches a specific door. This then checks for detection between the sprite to player position values, which is the X and Y, or initially the sprite character background to the character background data. Um, initially, it's comparing these two to see if there's an overlap between the, the color data and the sprite data, and there's basically a mathematical formula to line them up. And then when a match occurs, which is evaluated the variable COLL per collision, then the screen is wiped clean and a new map is redrawn. Um, below is an example of a map I created, and I do have other maps I could show you here. And I even have a friend actually working on projects, and I'd like to show you some of the maps he done here, and I think these are really good. Um, this was one he was working on. Um, we didn't initially use this one because it didn't have enough data. Um, to, well, initially what I mean is it basically was using too many characters, so I couldn't really load the map in. But he's going to be working on some more maps, and he's really excited to be a part of this project. So his name is Stacy Bates, um, and he'll be working on um, this map for us. The game will continue to the map when the player has located what I call the secret door. What I'd like to do is create a map that will show the player running inside of an abandoned building to search for his lost brother. And initially this map is being worked on by my friend here. Along the way the player will encounter gangs that attack and maybe eventually security guards that try to chase you out of private lots and stuff like that. Because I don't know if you've ever seen or Newton or seen in movies where people try to go where security guards go. The security guards are there to protect the property and keep trespassers away. So initially that's what they do. And of course the gangs are the ones that kidnap this friend anyway. And you're going to see different gang members along the way and have to fight them and stuff like that. And um, maybe other sprites will come into play, stuff like that. We'll see it as we go along. Please, and, you know, better make it interesting. Now I'd like to discuss some information about GitHub, which will help you to download the project. This project has the code uploaded to GitHub when it's ready. Many people are familiar with GitHub's user interface, but may not understand how to properly save a project to a computer. So I'd like to take a few moments to go over that. Um, GitHub stores the data in a repository that can be installed on your system. This example is directed for users with Windows 10. Go to the Start menu. Search for PowerShell. Once you have it open, make sure it's pointing to your user folder. For example, on mine it shows as PSC underscore users or slash user slash team SC. Then you can visit my GitHub page at this URL and click on the green code button. 
When a drop-down window appears, you can highlight the HTTP website and click on the icon to the right of it, which will be copied manually for you. Now back in PowerShell, you want to type in these two words, git clone, that's G-I-T, and then you put in, you paste in that directory where you copied it, in this case, where it's sitting on a GitHub, and press enter. Make sure you paste the URL after git clone. After this is done, GitHub will begin to install the repository on your system in the username folder. Once it has finished, you can open up an Explorer window to see the directory there. You can also type in chdrir, I think it's actually chrdir, the directory name, and open the folder for the directory you downloaded it to, and then type dir to see the files there as seen in this screenshot example. There are other commands I could show you, but that would make this more of a GitHub tutorial. If interested, try doing a Google search for GitHub tutorials and see what you can learn. Hi everybody, I wanna thank you for joining us for this YouTube session today, where we learned about how player deaths work when the sprite is essentially falling from a screen. Um, initially, after he falls for so many seconds, he, after so many um, counts, he's going to be triggered the player damage, which eventually is going to have him hit the floor and die. But if he is under that value, which is 68, then he's going to be safe. And the other thing we explored, too, was um, the player end of the, end of the game, too. So initially, after the player loses so many lives, he's gonna, the game's going to be over, and you're going to get the message saying fire to play again. And then we also covered whenever the player walks over to a door, it's actually going to lead to a new level, which is the map generation I have going on in process. And also I was showing you how to use GitHub in this session so that you could go ahead and download, you know, your own projects and stuff like that. So I guys hope you enjoyed this session as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. <clears throat> and as always, please feel free to subscribe, like, and, you know, share bell and notifications on this channel. You guys have a great day.